one thing I'd like to mention before starting this video is you might, if you, well, you probably will notice, I don't know if I've worn this in a video yet, but this is an actual Survivor buff. I got it off of eBay for like 60 bucks. They're usually more expensive than that. So I saw this a few months ago, thought it was a steal, so I got it. Um, anyways, Survivor Panama, or Exile Island for those who love subtitles, was a surprisingly great season with some of the best twists seen yet on the show, a great cast, and by far the best ending to any season of Survivor. Wait, did I say best? I meant worst. Anyways, more on that later. I really did love the season, kind of like Vanuatu, where I was surprised at how much I liked it. Now, quickly, I want to address that I originally said with this season I was going to split the cast ranking uh, by the original four tribes, tackling two tribes per video, but then I actually got to the season, and I realized just how little purpose those starting tribes served for the season, with them consolidating down to those standard two tribes in only the second episode, and I'm going to do the exact same thing for Survivor Cook Island. Islands. Um, I'm not going to do two tribes per episode and then two episodes. I'm just going to do the, the two tribes that they consolidate down to because they consolidate in like the third episode. So yeah. Um, but here's the problem. In this part, I will be ranking only seven people. And in part two, I'll be ranking nine. This is because the tribes consolidated after one person was already eliminated and a second person was sent to Exile Island instead of a tribe, later replacing the second boot on that same tribe. Well, Kasaya, the tribe with the winner, voted someone out in that episode, meaning that they had seven people on that tribe, plus the person from Exile Island makes eight. But we still have to put that first boot on a tribe to rank, and she just so happened to be on Kasaya before the consolidation itself. Self. And if that sounds confusing, the four tribes at the beginning were Kasaya, older women, Lamina, older men, Bayonetta, younger women, and Viveros, older, uh, younger men. Anyways, we'll focus more on Kasaya in part two, but today let's talk about Lamina after the consolidation. I put Misty at last for Lamina because she didn't really do all that much. She was the first person to be sent to exile and she didn't find the hidden immunity idol. I should probably explain that the whole twist this season was in addition to winning reward, the winning team would send someone from the losing team to an island separate from their tribe, sometimes coming back for immunity, but other times not coming back until after tribal council, essentially making them safe for that episode. In addition to that, there was a hidden immunity idol that the exiled could look for. On top of that, Misty was technically the first boot for Lamina but it wasn't for a lack of trying. You see, Lamina was separated into four, uh, into four parts. Three duos, and then Ruth Marie just kind of vibing off to the side. Those three duos were Terry and Dan, Nick and Austin, and Misty and Sally. Nick and Austin were sort of the swing duo because they were seemingly equally aligned with the men and the women, who were sort of against each other. Well, in episode three, Lamina lost immunity, and while the women wanted Ruth Marie out for being a physical detriment, but, but uh, Terry, and De Terry and Dan saw Misty as just as much of a liability, but also as more of a strategic problem too, and the Nick and Austin side with, sided with them and voted out Misty. I did truly like Ruth Marie. She, I think she had a lot of grit in her, and in a way she sort of reminded me of Tina Wesson. But the fact is that she was holding her tribe back, and once Lamina lost a second immunity uh, post-consolidation, it made the most sense to vote her out. Even if she was getting closer to Dan and Terry, the other guys got them to vote her out for the better of the tribe. Once again, I loved Sally the longer she stayed, and she ended up being the second to last Lamina standing, making it all the way to the final eight. But Lamina was essentially getting pagonged, and there wasn't much that could be done to save her at that point. I think she really really did have the potential to make it really far in the game. I think she was just put on the wrong tribe. She seemed to have a better strategic she seemed to have better strategic prowess than any of the younger, other younger women on Kasaya. And I think that had the roles been reversed, I could easily see seeing her make it all the way to the end and possibly even winning. As great as Sally was, the other four people from the season were some of my favorites from this season, like like out of the entire cast. Nick was a beast this season, and he, along with Austin, made this really likable and satisfying duo of guys who seemed like they could be jerks, but were both really nice people. There were uh, the Rosencrats and Guildenstern of Lamina, with their comedic peak being when they won beans from a reward challenge and ended up having serious gastrointestinal issues that got a pretty humorous edit. However, for Nick's case, his luck ran out at the merge, as right when the boat bringing Lamina to Kasaya was arriving, the Kasayas all then decided to stick together and vote them out one by one. It just so happened that the first individual immunity challenge was one of endurance, reminding the Kasayas that Nick is one of their biggest physical threats, and now that he hadn't won immunity, they decided to vote him out just short of making the jury in 10th place. And we've reached the podium of Lamina, and honestly, this just might be the podium of this entire season's ranking for me. Oh, the Kasaya ranking video is almost, like, futile, because these three right here are probably my three favorites of this season and would probably make it pretty high up on my three favorite players of all time. Um, and number three is, in my opinion, 
the most under uh, uh, underrated player, and not really player, because, I mean, he didn't really do that much strategically, but, like, the most underrated cast member, like, ever, and that is Austin Carty. Once again, Austin is a reminder to never judge a book by its cover. When I first saw Austin, I thought he was going to be an egotistical and rude jock, but over time, he turned out to be a very warm and kind person. He was able to stay safe all throughout the pre-merge as he was such a nice guy and helped well in both challenges and around camp. However, like Nick, his high in the game was short-lived once the merge rolled around, and he was voted out as the first juror. Not even Terry could keep him safe with his many strategic uh, ways. That being said, Austin's last-ditch effort to keep him safe was very tumultuous. He basically kept alternating between acting exhausted and unfazed during the endurance challenge in an attempt to not make himself look like a physical threat. I'm not really sure what he was thinking, but either way, he was one of my favorites from the season. Oh, I loved Dan so much. He was literally an astronaut, which led him to bond with Terry instantly as he was a, as Terry was a fighter pilot. Dan was an excellent asset for his team, being a provider and a sort of co-leader with Terry. Everybody loved Dan, but he ha easily has one of the saddest eliminations of all time outside of medical evacuations. Lamina loses the final tribal immunity challenge, and Dan sort of had a part in their losing. And on top of that, Lamina would have voted out Sally next, but knowing this, Kasaya purposely sent Sally to exile, with this being one of the times that she would miss tribal. Um, that sent Lamina scrambling, and Austin and Nick reminded Terry that instead of forcing a tie, he should just vote out Dan with them, as they all need, as they need all the physical advantage they can get going into the merge, so they sadly voted out Dan. And Dan even knew that he was going, but he seemed to embrace his fate with open arms, making his elimination all the more sad. This man was superhuman. He immediately took the reins of this tribe, never being in question of, of uh, going at all. Then one episode in the pre-merge, he gets sent to exile as he was obviously the strongest person on Lamina, and before you know it, he's already found the hidden idol, as if it was child's play. And he needed it, go as going into the merge, his allies were picked off one by one. Yet ironically, he didn't even need his idol, as this man was one of the most dominant comp beasts the show has ever seen, winning almost every individual immunity post-merge. He desperately tried to dig in his heels to keep his allies safe by trying to exploit visible cracks in the majority alliance, and even telling some of the Kasaias about the idol to convince them to work with him. Well, he finally gets some sort of break at the final six, where he seems to form an alliance with Courtney and Danielle, but that doesn't last long as Danielle immediately turned on him and Courtney, and was voted out just days, and, and Courtney was voted out just days later. He then sides with Shane in the next episode to seek revenge on Danielle, and then Shane goes home. Ultimately, Terry was a pretty unlucky guy this season, but with his ace in the hole and the hidden idol, and is consistently winning immunity, he was able to sail all the way to the final three, where he pulls a Lex and chokes at the final challenge, and is stabbed in the back a second time by Danielle when she chooses to not take him to the final two. This led to a very anticlimactic finale, as everyone wanted to see Terry there at the end, and even the jury admitted at the reunion that Danielle had ta that had Danielle taken Terry to final two, he would have been the winner of Survivor Panama. Duh. And interestingly enough, this is why that Going forward, so starting with Cook Islands, they did the finale at the final three instead of the final two. Because just look at all the seasons that we've had since then. And think of all the, like, the sort of fallen angels. Or, like, all, think of all the third place finishers on the previous seasons of Survivor that had they been in the final two, they would have won. I'm talking about Rudy, Lex, Kathy, Rob Sesternino, even Johnny Fairplay, but then it goes even further with, uh, you know, like, Wraith probably would have won in Guatemala. That's of, oh, uh, geez, 11? That's six out of 11 third-place finishers before Panama, and seven, including Panama, would have won if they were in the final two, which means that uh, more than half of those seasons probably would have had better endings if the third-place finisher had won. Um, and that's why they decided to bring it up to the final three so that, like, the favorite to win had one less spot to go up before making it to, like, the winner's circle. Uh, but that's interesting. Um, be on the lookout for part two, because I am actually going to make a part two of this video. That was just a joke um, uh, that I said back there. Uh, there is going to be a video about Kasaya, don't you worry, and it's going to come out very shortly, hopefully. But be on the look for that. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you later.